Hi, yes, I do, and this gives me a good excuse to talk about it because uh, I feel like lately I honestly haven't made a lot of content on it, and that bothers me because this is probably one of the number one topics I get reached out to by people um, saying that um, my videos about having HSV2 um, really like change their lives um, because it's so stigmatized. For everybody that's new, hi, my name's MJ. I am HSV2 positive. That means that I have genital herpes, and I do videos on it sometimes to hopefully one day minimize or end the stigma. I got diagnosed with genital herpes um, probably, I don't know, I want to say maybe five or six years ago because it was at the very beginning of my transition. I actually only found out that I had it because uh, the hormonal changes in testosterone triggered an outbreak. I had been celibate for a very long time, um, so I had it for a while before I started showing symptoms. That's actually one of my number one motivators um, as to why I speak out about it because so many people um, have no idea that they have it since the majority don't even show any symptoms. I also like to speak out about it because um, disclosure is so important to me and um, I think a lot of people are naive to just how many people do not care. Like they do not care. When I first found out I was diagnosed, I literally went back and um, disclosed to like anybody I had been with in the past just in case, you know, they had been exposed. A lot of people, when I say this, they'll be like, well, legally you had to, but no, I didn't. And that's what's scary. It depends on state to state, but most people do not have a legal obligation to disclose. And that is very scary. And even if there are laws in place, um, and I'm not saying you might already know this, but even if there are laws in place, um, the odds of proving that that person was the one that transmitted, very low. Very low, especially since the majority, like I said, don't show symptoms. So that's why I make this content um, to speak out about it and hopefully raise awareness, but also to help people realize that like it's not the end of their lives. Listen, not only do I have HSV2, but I'm also trans. And um, if we want to talk about thinking your life is over, I really thought that like maybe not my life, but my dating life was done. And surprisingly, nobody cared. Well, I shouldn't say nobody. I had like one or two people care, but that's over the course of talking to several, several people before I met my husband. The thing is, is that it's so common and people don't realize how common it is. Now, that's not an excuse not to disclose. Like I said, I'm not directing this at you. I'm just, you know, if anyone's new to my page. Um, but it's so common, yet so stigmatized, that a lot of people, they don't realize like how accepting people truly are because... It's actually more common than we think. And I'm not saying like everybody has a good experience when they're diagnosed, but um, it definitely wasn't the end of the road for me. I mean, obviously I'm married now. But yes, um, hi, I am MJ. I am HSV2 positive and uh, I try to make content on it from time to time. I hope you have Hi, thank you for your question. For those who are new, my name is MJ. Um, I am HSV2 positive, which means that I have genital herpes and I do videos on it to hopefully minimize the stigma or maybe one day end it. So actually, this is one of the most common myths, um, in my opinion, that I've experienced about HSV2 is people saying that um, you cannot spread it unless you have an outbreak. This is definitely not true um, because even if people are asymptomatic, um, the, the virus is still shedding. It, they still have viral shedding. Because of this, um, they can still transmit it even if there are no lesions or anything like that. This is actually how it gets transmitted sometimes because people are asymptomatic. They don't even know that they have it. Sometimes I'll get questions about like, do you know who gave it to you? Were you angry? Yada, yada, yada. To be honest, no, I'm not angry. I have an idea who gave it to me, um, but I could never pinpoint it. And even so, um, I know the reality is that so many people are asymptomatic and don't even know that they have it. Um, that I don't really feel like it'd be right to direct anger at anybody because there's a good chance they didn't even know themselves. Hopefully when I went back and disclosed to everybody, hopefully that gave them an eye opener to get tested themselves and so that they can protect themselves and future partners. But um, in reality, I don't really think anyone was at fault um, except, you know, I mean, it's my body. I should have used protection. <laughs> But realistically, unless like both people are getting like, you know, tested regularly, very regularly, um, it can happen really to anyone. This is why it's also important um, to look into blood tests as well. And the reason I say this, a lot of times when I speak out about this, people think that I am like, you know, downgrading uh, swab tests or like uh, invalidating them. And I certainly am not. I think any way to get tested and protect your body is extremely important and everyone should seek that out. But, um, I even like during active outbreaks, I have been tested and I've, I've, I have a confirmed diagnosis, but even 
during active outbreaks, my swab tests were always inconclusive. If someone wasn't having an outbreak and they were asymptomatic, um, really the only way to tell would be to get a blood test. It's hard though because insurance doesn't always cover that and a lot of people don't want to pay out of pocket for that, you know, like an STD panel and also HSV2 is not included on all STD panels. Um, but it is hard because it's like a lot of people have to pay out of pocket and I think that that's a huge accessibility issue when it comes to like uh, getting tested. But ideally, even if someone like never showed symptoms at all in their entire life, um, if they have had unprotected sex or even protected sex, really, um, a blood test is definitely a good idea. Thank you for your question. Hi, thank you for your question. And for those who are new, my name is MJ. I'm HSV2 positive, which means I have genital herpes um, and I do videos on it to hopefully end the stigma or at least minimize it. So this is in reference to the fact that um, when I was diagnosed, actually, I had no idea that I had it. Um, I had been celibate for quite some time, um, and the only reason I knew that I had it is because I started having outbreaks when I went on hormones, testosterone, um, it started triggering outbreaks for me, and that's how I knew, and that's why I went to the doctors. Because of this, it is literally almost impossible to trace who I even got it from, and so I made the decision that I was going to go back and uh, disclose to any previous partners just to be safe. A lot of people, when I say that, they're like, you didn't make a choice to do that. Yes, I did. Um, a lot of people are under the impression that laws protect them much more than they do. Um, much more. Um, I didn't have to do that, but it's the right thing to do. So I went and did that. Even though it was very scary, it was the right thing to do. Um, and literally, it was... <laughs> It was very terrifying, especially the fact that like um, a lot of these people were like cis men I was disclosing to and I had transitioned. Um, so it wasn't easy. But to be honest, everybody was really cool about it. I heard back from everybody except one person. Um, I fortunately did not um, give it to anybody. Nobody contracted it from me. Um, but everybody was really understanding. I was very, very surprised. I did not expect that reaction at all. Um, but yeah, people were honestly really laid back about it. I honestly thought it could have like turned into a safety issue because like, you know, going back and telling people like, you know, listen, there's a chance I could have transmitted HSV2 to you, like that's bad enough. Then to add in it that I had already transitioned at the time, um, I was nervous. <laughs> but everybody was very understanding, like I said. Um, it was difficult, it was a hard conversation to have, but um, they were very receptive. I was very lucky um, that I was met with such acceptance all around with my journey with HSV2. Um, and that's why I talk about it, because I want people to know, like, you know, their life isn't over. You know, I still advocate for doing the right thing safely. I know disclosing um, to previous partners especially can not always be safe, but I think, you know, disclosure is always the right option, in my opinion, as long as it can be done safely. Um, and that's why I do these videos to spread awareness on it, because unfortunately, a lot of people do not have your best interests at heart. Trust me.